to see today's photo, go to mtforchrist.org or follow me, M.T. Clark, on Facebook or Twitter. Good morning. Today's photo of a rosy sunset wonder comes to us from Dave Vaughn Photography, who shared this sunset show from Dave's excursion to the Marinos Coastal Walking Trail in Adelaide, South Australia, on social media back on March 3rd. Well, it's Friday, and as the sun sets on another traditional work week, I am thanking God for teaching us to number our days and for the other people in my life that I get to pass my time with while I'm waiting to see God face to face. The unknown expanse of time that will make up the days of our lives here on earth can be a daunting thing to consider. So the Lord established a way to not only process the passage of time, but to also find rest. God made the Sabbath to teach us to not be so busy with our daily lives and work to the point that we forget about the one who made us. The Sabbath gives our bodies um, rest, (laughs) much needed, uh, our bodies and minds, some much needed rest, but it was intended to keep us close to the Lord. So whether you have tomorrow, Saturday, the original Sabbath, and Saturday, I'll say it, the Christian Sabbath, bring it. Um, Whether you have these days off to rest or not is my prayer that you will find some time uh, this weekend or on the other days of the week to rest and worship the Lord. Having a relationship with God should include private times of devotions, Bible study, and prayer, but should also include times of gathering with other believers in the communion and fellowship of the saints, or church. Other people uh, are to be a part of our faith walk. We need one another. Jesus told us that we would know we would know his disciples by our love for one another, and I'm pretty sure he didn't have long-distance relationships in mind when he said that. One of the ways The love between us is expressed is in the sharing of burdens and being vulnerable with one another enough to ask for help. In recovery circles, help is sought in accountability relationships where we voluntarily submit to report our progress with our hurts, habits, or hang-ups to a trusted brother or sister in Christ. Accountability and receiving support can be a key to finding freedom and the ability to overcome besetting sins. But how and why you establish uh, and maintain your accountability to make it effective and meaningful um, uh, is important. Um, Beyond defining the subject, terms, duration, and conditions of your accountability plan and relationship, we should realize that accountability isn't about being lorded over or coerced into positive changes by another person. Accountability is about us individually, and our relationship with God, through which we are actually given the means and power to repent and overcome with permanent results. When we are faithful to stay the course with our action and accountability plans, we will experience progress and victory. But as time goes on, we will invariably come to a point in our walk where we will feel that we either don't need or want to be accountable anymore. I'm free already. Thanks. And you very well may be. And perhaps you should change the terms or durations or even the end your accountability relationship uh, if, you are on the, if you are out of the woods and walking free. But that decision should be made with the understanding that if we aren't diligent in maintaining our freedom, we can very easily stagnate and go back into our old patterns of bondage or see them manifest in new ways. I'm currently in a long-term campaign against the flesh uh, with food addiction, one which has been one of success and failures throughout my life. And even though I have achieved a level of success with my physical health that I had never dreamed was possible, I still see those old patterns of comfort eating and the desire to be mindless uh, with my eating re-emerging from time to time. And have to come to, and have come to realize that being accountable to another person may need to be a permanent fixture in my life when it comes to this battle with food. I don't know if I will always have to be accountable, but after recent indulgences at parties and in the spirit of the holidays, let's celebrate early, really. Um, <laughs> that I am still susceptible to wanton disregard and reckless abandon when it comes to food. Yes, I know where I have gone astray, and yes, I have learned how to self-correct, 
But I have also realized that when we are alone in our battles, we can make all kinds of compromises that keep us at a progressively deteriorating maintenance level, where we start to see things slip little by little until our fortitude is eroded. A few extra pounds turns into five pounds. Five pounds turns into ten. And if we aren't careful to stop the insanity, we can progressively see all the ground we have gained go back into the enemy's hands. So accountability takes us out of the dark and puts us into the light by admitting to someone else, I need help over here, and in telling ourselves and God that we are committed to renewing our minds and changing our lives for good, we can stop that slippage and stay in the place of freedom, victory, and joy. I hate to say it, um, but if we are not winning, we are losing. And the point of accountability is to humble ourselves to avoid the insidious pride and pull of the flesh that says, whatever, I'll do what I want. Uh, So I repented last night and checked in as successful with my accountability partner to tell myself, God and someone I trust, that I'm still in this fight and I'm going to, and I'm not going to quit until my mind is renewed and I don't meander back to, into those compromising positions that lead to bondage again. It is that time of the year to give up things, so let's commit to keep the change. Lent can be the time for breakthroughs. And speaking of Lent, it's the 27th day of Lent, and so we continue my personal walkthrough of Gracia Grindall's 40-day journey with Martin Luther to observe and celebrate the Lenten season. It is in this walkthrough of Grindel's devotional is our hope that uh, we will get to know Martin Luther a little better as we seek to draw closer to the Lord on our journey to Resurrection Sunday or Easter. And so we continue uh, journey day 27, uh, which and Martin Luther writes, May your name be hallowed. How does this come about? Whenever the word of God is taught clearly and purely, and we, as God's children, also live holy lives according to it. So you see that in this petition we pray for exactly the same thing that God demands in the second commandment, that his name should not be taken in vain by swearing, cursing, deceiving, etc., but used rightly to the praise and glory of God. Whoever uses God's name for any sort of wrong profanes and desecrates his holy name, thus rendering unholy by misuse that which is holy in itself. This position, then, is simple and clear if we are if we only understand the language, namely that to hallow means the same as in our idiom to praise, extol, and honor, both in word and deed. Now it's from Martin Luther, and the biblical wisdom that's paired with that is Matthew 6, 7, and 8, uh, which says, when you are, or, or Jesus said, when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And at that point, their devotion says, time for silence, uh, silence for meditation. So if you'd like, you can pause the podcast, stop reading, or sit quietly for 60 seconds or a few minutes. And uh, focus on your breath and calm stillness in the present moment and reflect on what Martin Luther had to say uh, in today's passage and uh, what Jesus had to say in Matthew 6, 7, and 8. And after you're appropriately ready, we can move on to the questions to ponder. The first one says, Luther insists that God's name is hallowed when we, as God's children, live holy lives according to it, God's word. What would such a life look like? A life that hallows God's name is one that speaks the gospel of Jesus Christ in words and action. It means living a Christian lifestyle of spiritual disciplines, doing good works, and sharing the hope we have in Christ by evangelism and making disciples. That's my, my take on it. Anyway, uh, the next question asks, in what ways does teaching and living contrary to the word of God profane the name of God? Well, the biggest blight on our Christian faith is those who claim to be Christians and who live sinful and or unloving lives. Our faith is often used to beat, beat others up and to fuel our self-righteousness. And while Jesus called sin, sin, and didn't care about the approval of man, he did, he did lovingly minister to those before him, whether they would believe or not. 
when people who call themselves Christians do not walk or live like their supposed Lord and Savior, it profanes God's name. So we all have to repent and grow to be more and more like Jesus to avoid blaspheming God's holy name. The third question is, in what ways might a church which hallows God's name, that is, which seeks to praise, extol, and honor God, both in word and deed, be countercultural? Being a Bible-believing church that seeks to be authentic in living out our faith through both word and deed, unfortunately, can be countercultural because of the lethargy and compromise of other quote-unquote nominal or quote-unquote liberal churches who believe in the gospel and 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 the Bible in principle uh, and in principle and and in theory, but not in practice. Uh, some churches proclaim their freedom and forgiveness to, uh, to mean that they can do whatever they wish with the way they live their lives and disregard the whole counsel of God's word. Ironically, this can apply to the most traditional or spirit-filled churches who are big on words and doing good works in public, but who fail to let God's word convict their hearts and lead them to repent of their personal sins. Believers are common. Disciples are rare and thus countercultural even within the church. And there, normally there's a psalm fragment, but my Kindle version on day 27 does not have one. And um, that's what it is. And so we move on to journal reflections. Um, think back to times when you experienced someone misusing the name of God carelessly or for false or malicious purposes. How did you feel and how did you respond? Unfortunately, I have often seen God's name used to try to manipulate or shame people for false and malicious ways. I felt it was wrong because the person speaking was respected for knowing God's word. Uh, what God's Word says, and was using their position and knowledge over people who are not as well versed in what the Bible actually says and means. When, when possible, I would offer counsel and encouragement to those who had been abused to offer the truth of what the Bible actually means, but more often than not, those, the deviations and heresies are su subtle, or could be a matter of interpretation. And the person who was abused had such a shallow faith or poor understanding that they couldn't grasp the differences or didn't really care because they were just playing church and often would walk away altogether when any difficulties arose in their newfound faith. Yikes. Anyway, uh, think back. The next journal entry says, think back. Have you ever been indifferent to God's holiness? If so, describe the feeling. If not, what helps is to keep you focused? Yes, uh, when I was, uh, for most of my life, um, I was indifferent to God's holiness, meaning I never thought I could share in it. Um, yeah, so why try, right? After I first got born again, I thought that holiness was an impossibility for me, so it wasn't important to my personal walk. I, I always thought and knew God was holy and Jesus was holy, but I stayed separated from that for so long because I knew I wasn't. Coming to have knowledge of the truth of Christ's righteousness being given to us or imputed helped a lot, but actually being moved by my love for God to surrender to his will really changed my life and helped me to stay focused on being progressively sanctified. And the next journal entry... Uh, asked us to write down ways in which you will try to praise, extol, and honor God, both in word and deed today. How can you encourage others to do the same? Well, I write this blog, do this podcast, seek the Lord's wisdom and ways, serve at my church and serve outside of my church to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and the message of freedom, peace, and joy that is found in following Christ alone. These things I do are to draw me closer to God and are also done to encourage others that they can do the same. That moves us along to the prayers, prayers for the life of faith. And our devotional ask us to pray that the word of God will be preached and kept purely in your own congregation and pray that you can find ways to share the word with one person you know who is longing to hear the gospel. So let's do that. Uh, Lord, I pray that your word will be preached and kept purely in my church. 
Please, Lord, let your Holy Spirit enlighten the leadership and congregation of my church to pursue you and your holiness. And help me to find ways to share the word with others who are longing to hear the gospel. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the prayer for today from today's devotion is, well, it says, Holy Lord, I bow before you with awe and wonder that you have gone to such great lengths for me, a poor sinner, and given your own son to make me yours. Amen. Amen. All right, that moves us along to today's Bible verse, which comes to us from the Quick Scripture Reference for Counseling by John G. Cruis. This morning's meditation verses come from the section on contentment, coveting, and priorities. And today's verses are Proverbs 15, 16, and 7. Uh, chapter 15, verses 16 and 17. Um, and the word of God says, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted calf with hatred. Today's verses are the first of two passages of scripture that fall under the 14th point of our Counseling Reference Guide's resource section on contentment, coveting, and priorities. And that 14th point is, it's better to have a simple lifestyle than to have wealth with a lot of conflict in in the home. Today's verses from Proverbs teach the wisdom that possessions are not the means to happiness. God is, and that all the things and wealth in the world are of little value when you don't have the peace and love in your life that is only possible from knowing the Lord. First John tells us not to love the world for a reason. The things of this world can't give us lasting satisfaction and can't adequately address the needs of the heart. Only God can give us eternal life and the peace that goes beyond all understanding. So let's seek him. As always, I invite all to go to mtforchrist.org, where I always share insights from prominent Christian theologians and counselors to assist my brothers and sisters in Christ with their walk. Today we continue sharing from According to Your Word, Morning and Evening Through the New Testament by Stephen F. Alford. Alford's devotional basically instructs us to read a chapter of the New Testament daily. And today's chapter is Luke 16. And from Luke 16, he shares from uh, verse 10, which says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And Stephen Alford writes, What God looks for in his servants is not primarily success, but faithfulness. In the parable of the talents, the master is recorded as saying, Well done, good and faithful servant, and not well done, good and successful servant. The essence of faithfulness is exhibited in that which is least. Anyone is faithful, or can be so, in great matters. But he that can be faithful in the small things is he who is faithful. In any case, God can use our faithfulness in the small things for his greater purpose and glory. All for praise, Lord, make me faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah, uh, being faithful in the small things, they add up to a lot. Making small changes in your life and being faithful in the small things add up to a life, uh, you know, a huge te testimony of, of your surrendered will to the Lord and, um, you know, your, your understanding of the intricacies of a Christian lifestyle. Um, the little things matter and uh, they add up to a lot. They add up to a faithful life. Now that's how we're faithful, uh, doing the small things. Um, as I've walked in the Spirit for a few years now, um, I, I notice the conviction in my heart to do things that are right, whether it's buckling your seatbelt or, you know, um, obeying speed limits when, <laughs> when you're not in a hurry um, or, or putting your ladder mate on a ladder to keep it secured to a pole when you can just run up the ladder and, you know, not worry about it. Um, you know, or, you know, these things, or eating good, you know, eating nutritious food instead of junk, um, doing the small things, you know, being a good steward of our body and our relationships, um, doing those small things add up to a lot. They add up to peace and harmony and, um, you know, expressing God's love. Um, so we have to do those small things. And, and when we do that, we hallow God's name. Um, you know, we make it holy. Like, wow, that guy's a Christian. He actually lives like it. That's different. Um, he's not a jerk. Whoa, you know. So, so let's let's try to be authentic in our faith the best we can, and 
let's ask for forgiveness when we fail um, and ask for the Lord to help us and to be diligent uh, to report to other people, you know, that this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to live a Christian life, I'm trying to clean up my language. I'm trying, well, I'm trying to, you know, be healthy. Um, help me to do this. Um, and, and Lord, help me to do this and, you know, talk to yourself. Hey, let's do this. Um, you know, when we press in with our intention and go to God for help and make ourselves accountable so we don't live in the shadows of our own compromise and deception, um, we can find freedom and peace. And uh, sometimes we have to maintain it until our mind's completely renewed. You know, when I first gave up alcohol, that came up a lot in my thought life. Oh, boy. You know, oh, wow. I gotta, I'd like to drink. I would like a drink. But I've been walking free since 2015. Well, nine years now. Um, nine years next week, I think. And um, it doesn't come up anymore. You know, the renewing of your mind changes your desires of your heart, you know, and the Lord will bless you when you when you walk with him. And you can't hold on to the old beliefs of like, wow, I really like to drink. I like this particular beer. Like, oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> if you're trying to walk away from it, you can't think that way. You have to change your relationship to the things you want to get free of. And sometimes that's like food and like things like candy. Like, really? Candy's pretty harmless, isn't it? Until it, you know, makes you, when you realize you're in real bondage to it, have no self-control, um, it's not so good. So we have to redefine the terms to speak the truth. This isn't really good for me. It's not good food um, <laughs> are things that I, I've learned. Uh, and have, have, you know, like I said, I am in the best physical shape of my life. And I can watch that slip away or I can walk in it and, you know, maybe even get a little more fit. Who knew? Um, but either way, I want to walk in it authentically and not falsely. And the way we walk in it falsely is when we go, when we take the first opportunity to, to give in to temptation, you know, or, you know, develop, oh, well, it's a special time of the year. Like, it's never a special time of the year when it means you might end up in bondage again. Um so we got to be, but there's grace and this walk isn't religious. It's, it's personal. So we, 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 we pick our battles and choose our goals and, you know, follow the Lord and ask him for wisdom and help. And when we do that, we find victory. So, uh, we encourage that and we encourage the life of praying prayer. So let's pray. Lord God, heavenly father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. Lord, thank you so much for, you know, uh, the, the times and seasons that we can, mark our progress and the people that help us in our walk. Um, Lord, they're very important to me, and I thank you for the way, the way you've created things, uh, that, that we're not alone and we can lean on other people, and of course we can lean on you, which we're doing today. Lord, we pray for anyone who's listening or reading today's message, that you would come alongside them and bless them in their prayer requests and their life of faith. And as always, we pray for you to go before us today. Open our eyes to the things you want us to see and lead us in the way we should walk. So all we want to do is represent you in your kingdom. And we're going to need your help with that big time. So, uh, Lord, help us. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we love you. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.